Hi and welcome back to my SCCM System Sensor Configuration 2007 videos. In the previous videos, 1 through 6, we went ahead, configured and deployed SCCM. And in these videos, we're going to be actually going in and um, setting it up, running uh, reports and uh, querying our workstations and deploying packages. So in the first video, in this video, um, we need to run into we need to run few basic steps to set it up the first thing we need to do is set up our boundary and so what you need to do is uh, you click on boundaries as you can see I've already uh, created a test boundary um, for our testing purposes and basically what you need to do is um, you right click on boundaries and you, the way you get to boundaries first of all is under site database under site management, this is the site key that you specified during installation. And then under there, you'll see boundaries. So you right click, click on new boundary, and here you'll have uh, an option to set it up. You give it a description, whatever you want to call it, um, and then you have the site code automatically and put it in there. If you have multiple sites, challenge sites, you know, you can uh, specify, by, specify that by uh, click on a drop down. Under type, you can set up boundary by subnet, by Active Directory site, or an IP range. We're going to be setting it by setting it up by Active Directory site. So you click in there, and then you have the site name window that comes up. Um, you're going to click on Browse, and it's going to automatically pull in your site, whatever you had called your site. You know, corporate headquarters, Chicago, New York. Depends what you want to call it. Whatever you have called it, that's the site that's going to come up. And that's within Active Directory, if you remember. Uh, so you go ahead, click on that, click OK, and that is gonna. And you click OK here, and that's gonna pull up your. That's gonna create your site for you, your uh, boundary for you. So what you need to do is we go up to our site, and we're gonna right-click that and go to Properties. And under Properties, we're gonna click on Site Mode here. Where it says site um, site mode, see how it says mixed mode. You can click on drop down and choose native mode. Under mixed mode, we have the second option. It says automatically approve computers and trusted domains. This you do that. You choose the middle option, advanced, and you click on automatically create new client records for duplicate hardware ID for that username. So go ahead and check that check mark that one. Then check mark these two. You're going to click on OK. Now we're going to cl click on Client Agents, and here we're going to configure client, client agents as to what we need to inventory. Uh, so you can go ahead and double click on Hardware Inventory and mark Enable Hardware Inventory on Clients. So click OK. Software Inventory, double click that. Enable Software Inventory to seven days. Click on Inventory Collection. Here, just specify what we need to uh, uh, search for within the um, on the client machines. What kind of software? Well, what you can do is you're going to click on this little star, and you're going to click on. We're going to search for um, uh, everything with exe in it. So you type you type um, star dot exe, and then we click on the set. And here you can specify the directory, so you do percent program files, or Win directory, or or whatever, whatever directory you wanted to look at, whatever, whatever variable. I don't want it to go through all the all the uh, uh, executables on the computer, so I did program files, and then you can say uh, uh, you can exclude compressed files and exclude Windows files. When you do that, this is going to create a um, entry here, so it's going to look for. Uh, just the, any executables and program files. So when you run it next time, and then you look at the inventory data, uh, you can say, "Oh, such and such computer has uh, installed this program," you know, without our authorization or whatever, you know. Um, so that's that's for that. Under file collection, you can also specify files which files you want. Well, we wouldn't want that because then you have way too many files in here. So you leave that blank. Inventory name, you know, you can say how you how you want it to show up, uh, in different ways and so on and so forth. Um, so you leave that default. That's fine. Click OK. Advertise programs. 
Well, we want it, we want the software to be advertised and distributed to the client. So check mark that and allow users target uh, allow user targeted advertisement request and then new program just, uh, notification icon opens add or remove program. So check mark all these. And you can also say you do want to send a message to them. Do you want a sound to come up when the new packages arrive? You can check mark all these. You can you don't have to check mark them. It's just my you know the way I do it. Click OK. Computer client. Double click that. And here you can um, you specify the uh, user account. So um, you can say set, and then whatever your domain name is, and then whatever the uh, administrator ID and password you can actually create a separate account ID um, uh, SMS account ID that can uh, set that up for SMS admin or whatever uh, like we did in originally you can specify that in there for test purpose I just put my domain admin password in there the user account and password but you need to specify a separate um, active directory domain account uh, for this so click OK that's fine that's okay Enable desired configuration management on computers. Mobile, since we don't have any mobile device, we're not going to mess with remote tool clients. Enable remote tool clients, um, meaning it'll give you full control over their machines. It's pretty self explanatory, just make sure it's check marked. Enable software updates on clients. And enable software metering on clients. And enable network access, access protection on clients. All right. Once you do all that, when you enable it, um, give it a few minutes, and it's gonna go ahead and uh, do uh, inventory of all your networks. Um, so if you scroll down and you come down to collections, and then you go into all systems, uh, this would go out and actually uh, uh, do a. a, a a collection of all your network as to what's in there and I'll uh, list it in here for you so if you have just do all users all user groups it will list all those user groups but all systems it pulls all the data in here for us now in order for us to um, install our client on there what we need to do is we need to right click and uh, what, you, what you can do is you can either right click one at a time right click click on install a client click on or what you can do is right click on system computers click on install client and it'll try to go out there and install the client on all the machines um, included sub sub collections and so on and so forth you can check mark all of them doesn't really matter hit next it'll go out and try to install the client on all the machines uh, when you click on finish uh, give it some time and the way you know the client is being installed on the um, other machines is if you right click on the client machine and go to uh, task manager you'll have this CCM EXC uh, file in here uh, you can actually click on your my computer go to C drive uh, and go to system 32 and in here you'll have the CCM setup and the CCM um, folder if you go into the CCM folder If you go into the CCM setup folder, you got the CCM setup.log file, and if there's any error message, it'll tell you if it was completed successfully or not. Um, the, the, and this is how you know it was completed successfully. Um, like I said, as you can see, I had done this many, many times. I kept on running it, and it wouldn't install. And I kept on running it, and it wouldn't install. And uh, just a hint, so you guys know, um, after troubleshooting this for a long time, um, there are certain ports you need to enable uh, on your network uh, in order for this to uh, go through. If you go to your firewall, and I think I took the easy way out and I completely disabled the firewall because this was testing, but if you go to the Microsoft website, they tell you all the ports that need to um, be configured properly. If you go to Windows Firewall and Exceptions, you need to make sure the file and print sharing is enabled, and you need to make sure Remote Assistant is enabled. Uh, also.